Hello, everybody. It's me, your friendly neighborhood pseudoscience pseudo-expert. I tried recording this a minute ago, but I think I was suffering from a heat stroke, so we're trying it again. Another day, another DLC character, and now with a man bun and mustache to show that time has passed. For those of you who have seen the other few videos in this series, which, by the way, I highly recommend if you haven't, you know the drill. I slowly hobble my way through a new form of pseudoscience, Tiny Tim style, establish a set of rules in order to find a couple likely candidates for the next DLC slot, then pick a front runner to label as my official prediction, Kurt courtesy of the hands of fate. And outside of the fact that I am now keenly aware that I am 0 for 1 on the DLC predictions, this video is no different. With that said, I'll let Hipster McLipworm here explain what's on the agenda for today. So for this episode, I'm gonna do some deep diving into astrology, which if the rest of these videos serve as any indication as to my knowledge of astrology, uh, none. I have none. The plan for today is that we find Sakurai's astrology sign, and then we find the day that he announced DLC pack number two, and we find the horoscope for his astrology astrology sign on that day. And hopefully the horoscope for that day is going to give us enough information so that we can patch something together. And so I did exactly that in an effort that I can only describe as feeling uncomfortably close to stalking. August 3rd, 1970. So because Sakurai was born August 3rd of 1970, that means that he's a Leo. Good for him. I don't know what that means, but we're going to find out. So next thing we got to do, go and find the day that he announced DLC pack number two. I'm going to be honest. I forgot that they announced fighter pass number two with the Byleth announcement. That's when you know you fucked up. You pre-jacked the Fighter Pass 2 announcement because you knew that was at least going to take some of the shade off. Anyway, January 16th is the day that we're looking at. And so, with Sakurai's birthday, mother's maiden name, and first four digits of his social security number securely locked within my steel trap of a noggin, it was time to find some horoscopes from the day of the DLC announcement and get to work. And since I don't typically carry newspapers around with me, let alone ones from January, I opted for the next best thing and went on yet another trip through the World Wide Web. Yeah, so this is the part where it, it becomes entirely uh, up to my discretion which websites I choose and which ones sound legit. I'm gonna say if I had to guess, the top result is probably a safe bet. It wasn't. Oh my god. This is a novel. Can I find the spark notes for this? I realized very quickly that my tiny primate brain would be unable to effectively come up with good candidates from these encyclopedic horoscopes without a bit of time to do some research first. So I decided to sort this out like any reasonable individual would by copying and pasting the horoscopes into a Google Doc and putting off the work until later. An act of equal parts ingenuity and lazy assification that I figured would be best expressed in the form of a brief montage. So yeah, cue the montage. Astrostyle.com, commonly known as the successor to the cha-cha slide. <sighs> I don't know why I'm even reading it. I'm just gonna copy and paste it and figure it out in post. How many of these websites is enough? I'm just gonna do like five. Oh, it has the word national in it. That means it must be credible. Moon alert. Uh-oh, the moon's here, guys. Ooh, the star. I'm pretty sure astrology is all about stars. Watch these all just say like the same exact thing in different phrasing. This looks like it just ripped off the font for the New York Times. Oh, this one has dope pictures. Good for you, Vogue. I don't know, maybe Vogue has done like some shitty stuff that I'm unaware of. If they're a shitty corporation, then fuck them. I never liked them from the start. But if not, go Vogue. All right. Is this all I have to do? Am I done? I think I'm done. Hey, well, personal message uh, from me now to me in the future. Have fun editing this dipshit. All right, well, it doesn't feel so good from the other side, but regardless, I had collected my horoscopes. A lot of them talked about this overarching theme of being at a pivotal moment in your life and learning to trust and listen to the right people, which is a very anti-hero position to be in, if you ask me. One of the horoscopes also made reference to someone looking to achieve mastery of some sort of skill, and a few of them noted the importance of sticking with a partner or a close friend. All in all, this drew a pretty clear picture of this character in question, and after a bit of time, I had come up with some pretty strong cases for who this could be. So enough dip Dilly dallying. It's prediction time. And boy, oh boy, this one is starting off strong. Alright, now hear me out here. I know there are probably a good deal of people who hear this name get brought up as a smash candidate and would rather take a grab hammer to the griff balls than hear one more sweaty ass loser debate the logistics of a Sergeant Johnson Echo fighter. But I also guarantee you, you'll be hard pressed to find at least one friend who hears this 
and doesn't cream their Mark IV Mjolnir armor right then and there. Unless you're like 12. But then again, I'm pretty sure those guys only think that there are like two games in existence and those are Fortnite and cyberbullying. So I'm just gonna disregard that demographic for now. Like it or not, Halo is one of the most beloved franchises in the history of video games. Does this automatically mean Master Chief should be put in the game? No. To be fair, if DLC characters were picked solely based on popularity contests, then Fighter Pass 2 probably would have featured Giorno Giovanna, Harambe, and the Travis Scott Burger. That said, when you take a look at those horoscopes and they're referencing an anti-hero who's mastered their craft and has reached a pivotal turning point alongside a lifelong companion, it's hard to find someone who fits this description better than the Chief with his constant struggles against the Covenant, as well as his later rogue operations against the UNSC alongside Cortana. He's a hardened veteran, he's faced essentially every life-threatening circumstance twice, and is no stranger to a fair share of betrayals, and one of his taunts can just be the entirety of Halo 5, because according to the community, that game is just one big joke. I rest my case. And with that said, let's move along to our next character. Okay, so I've never actually played the Devil May Cry series, but I've seen this demon-hunting, motorcycle-riding, pizza-loving e-boy's face on enough DLC wish lists to take the hint. So, Dante, the main character of the Devil May Cry series, is the son of the legendary demon Sparta. He also owns a devil-hunting business called, can you believe it, Devil May Cry. For those especially perceptive viewers out there, you might have noticed that this is a bit of a conflict of interest. And here we find the similarity to the horoscope, because not only would I describe Dante as having mastered his craft, I'd say that for every face-off he has against Nightmare Wind, or the Mecha Pope, he has an equal amount of fights against foes like, say, his twin brother Virgil, who serves as a constant source of conflict between his own humanity and his familial ties. He's definitely the anti-hero type, he's absolutely had to learn to trust the right people, he's got a couple close companions in Lady Trisha Nero, and also he just had a game come out, like, last year. So all in all, I think this pick is about as good as it gets. Alright, I've got one last guess, but you need to promise that no matter who it is, you won't get mad, okay? Good, because look, you can't expect me to make four of these goddamn videos and not throw in at least one serious while Ouija guess. No, 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 you get away from that comment section right now. I gave you guys Spyro in the last video, you give me this. Listen, I get it. Is there even a slight chance that he's actually getting in the game after having been all but deconfirmed by damn near everyone at Nintendo? Yes, Sakurai's a tricky bastard and we know this, but more importantly, does he fit the description set by the horoscope? And to that, I have to also say yes. Think about it. Is he at a turning point in his life, starting to question what to believe and who to trust? in the realm of Smash Bros? Absolutely he is, given that it seems he can't even trust Sakurai to put faith in him as a character. Is he looking to perfect some sort of craft? You watch the opening cutscene to Mario Power Tennis and you tell me, buddy. And do I even have to waste your time asking if he has some sort of partner or close friend? No! Now here comes the tough part. Obviously this guest does in part come from a personal bias, and in the spirit of this series I feel obligated to recognize that this bias might be clouding my judgment in terms of the final decision. With that in mind, if it were up to me, well, Ouija would have already been up on that winner's podium looking down on all the peons of gamer society. However, since this decision should be based on the horoscope and not on my clearly superior brain, I have to lend my fourth official prediction to Dante. The reason I came to this conclusion, though, is pretty firmly based on some heavy spoilers from Devil May Cry 5, so if you haven't played the game yet, or you just don't want to be spoiled, I mean, you can skip to this time code in the video, or, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's my that's my prediction, so there's not really much else after this, so. I mean, you could stay if you want. I mean, I, I'd appreciate it. Appreciate it, but like, uh, there's really not much else. I'm just being upfront with you. Okay, so when the horoscope discussed having some sort of companion, it more specifically addressed growing a stronger bond between or even reuniting with someone close to you. And this is exactly what happens in the end of Devil May Cry 5 between Dante and his brother Virgil, resulting in them ultimately deciding to go into the demon realm together, knowing full well that neither of them would be able to leave again ever. And this is after like five games of the two of them sharing probably the worst brotherly relationship. I have ever seen, bar none. And this only further perpetuates this constant theme throughout the games of being torn between his human side and his demon side and knowing your enemy. And that's not even mentioning all of the stuff that he has to go through to unlock his demon powers. I mean, if you want to talk about mastering your craft, Dante's relationship with his swords and mastering his half demon powers, that's sort of a perfect example. So with that in mind, there you have it. Dante is my fourth official prediction of who's going to be the next Smash Bros. DLC based on pseudoscience. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.